What's up, Mel? We about to get oxen in here. Jordan won't let me. That's all he could talk about was having oxen in here. Oh, let me see. As soon as Lamar hop on, we're going to get it started. Oh, Lamar hop on, we're going to get it started. Um, Again, a little prequel for Pops, Melvin, Chandler. Thank you for sticking with us again. Coach Francis, what's up? Um, we about to have Lamar Butler. You know, he was all mates, all match that state champion at Oxen Hill. Part of that legendary final four run at Mason. Went on to play professionally. Did some time, you know, broadcasting. Did some time broadcasting, short stint. We're going to talk about that. And, you know, now he's coaching. He played on a high level. Now he's coaching at a high level. He's assistant down at Paul the Six and also an assistant on Team Takeover. So we're going to get into that. I appreciate you, Coach Francis. Definitely appreciate that. Definitely appreciate that. Coach Francis, you know, he changed a lot in youth basketball for sure. Shout out to you for that. This is gonna be a good one. I think it's gonna be a good one. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I just couldn't see you on the screen. I didn't know you was in here. I don't know what's going on. Nothing much, nothing much. I'm glad you could join us today. Oh, viewers, can you tell us if you can see Lamar? Yeah. Or maybe it's just my phone. I think it's my phone. I'm going to cancel it down my ass you back in. All right. Let me try my other phone. All right, that's a bad. That's a bad. I'm gonna just cancel this one. Wait till you get in. And so when we get him in, we can get it going. Played with a lot of great players. Like I thought he about to have some, you know, good content for us. And again, whenever you think of something, please just ask. We don't. I don't get to see every single comment, question, but please just ask away. And we'll get to it. What's up, John? Get to it, so we get to it. And again, like we're gonna keep having these. We gonna um, already got the June and July schedule ready, so and we're gonna keep this going for sure. We're gonna keep this going. What's up, Lamar? There you go. I can see you now. There we go. There we go. All right, yeah, excuse the hat, crap. I'm looking like everybody Man, else. That's <laughs> why I got the hat on. Mine in the wash. Mine in the wash. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us again. Um, no problem. I did like a brief intro while while you was getting connected, so okay. we kind of just gonna hop into it a little bit. Um, for, first thing I like to ask, like when when did you find that love for basketball? What was what was that time or instant? Man, I really didn't. I would say I was twelve years old. My first love was football. I just didn't have the body for it. Okay. Uh, I never forget. I was in practice and I got hit by my teammate. I was just like, nah, this ain't for me. Um. So then that's why I kind of started liking basketball more. Um, and it's actually been a county championship. I turned the ball over to lose the championship. And it stung. So it kind of made me, you know, want to get better okay. at basketball. So, yeah, I was 12 years old. It was like that summer, that fall, into the winter season of basketball. It was like all culmination of p pulling me or pushing me towards basketball. Got it. Got it. So when, when you were – was it a lot of uh, – were you playing AAU or was it a lot of boys and girls club or a yeah. of both? Both back when I played um, boys and girls club, played for Oxen Hill, obviously. Um, and then I played AAU for my dad. We had a team called Metro, Metro, uh, dang, brain fart. It's Metro, uh, I can't remember AAU team, Levi Franklin. Okay. Um, and then I played for Oxen Hill Six, is kind of branched off from Metro. Um, okay. so I played my dad growing up at AAU all okay. the way through high school. Okay, so like. Did you do a lot of like a lot of kids? Now you do like a lot of training, or did you do like a combination of both playing pickup and training? 
Yeah, back then we didn't have trainers. Um, I should say we didn't have it. It wasn't as big as it is today. Uh, you kind of just work with your coaches. Um, but as far as the individual skill set that you see now, we didn't really have. Uh, we did a lot of pickup. So, I mean, you come to Oxen Hill, we work out four days a week, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday, so five days a week. And pickup games will last for, you know, a couple of hours um, after yeah, skill work. Yeah. So, yeah, 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 we, yeah, we got it in. Uh, our coach, it seemed like our gym was always open. It seemed like we were in the gym or we were in school. Uh, I can say that now. But, yeah, we uh, we got a, a lot of pickup, a lot of skill work. Um, back when I played, it wasn't, like I said, a lot of training. You didn't leave practice to go see a trainer like you see kids doing now. Got you. Got you. Mm-hmm. So, like, going going into high school, did you take, like, the normal, like, what they say, the normal route, you know, JV, varsity, or would you immediately go to varsity? Yeah, so my freshman year, um, we were loaded. I mean, we had, like, two starting fives. Um, we played JV, myself, Phil, Goss, Justin. Everybody always associates us three because we were the same class. Mm-hmm. Uh, we played JV. We moved up, moved up to the end of the end of the bench on varsity our freshman year, and um, that was the year we lost the state championship in five overtimes. Uh, we practiced with varsity end of the year, and then the following year we moved up and played varsity. But yeah, I, we we kind of knew going in we weren't gonna play oh, varsity wow. as freshmen. That was tough back then. I mean, Mike Sweeney yeah. was like a freshman, yeah. Uh, and I think the next freshman after him to play varsity was Ray Brewer. So it was tough in the four A back then to see guys playing. Uh, varsity as freshman, you just didn't see it um, right. like you do now. All right. So that high school playing, like you just said, Phil, Justin, like Mike was there, like playing with all that talent. You think it it helped prepare you for like future endeavors in basketball? Oh yeah. Outside of them, my coach, uh, Coach Lanier, uh yeah. he's very militant. I mean, when you saw Lanier, it was like you straightened up because you knew he's either gonna do something crazy or say something crazy. Um, but he was very strict. So it prepared me. Like, I, honestly, my college workouts weren't as tough as my high school workouts. Just one, one because of the talent level, but two, like I said, because of Coach, he pushed us. I mean, we lost a game we had we called Blue Monday. We didn't touch a basketball, and we were run for two, two and a half hours. Um, so, yeah, it was – my high school was – it was no joke. It was definitely on a college level as far as the intensity. And the, and the guys, we pushed each other. Like, you know, nobody let – nobody, like, take a day off and practice. It was, it was very tough, um, high-intensity. Yeah, uh, teammates. So, no, nah, that that's tough. Like, a lot of times, like you see, a lot of guys go off to college. They're not ready for that type of intensity. Yeah, you, you had the upper hand having that type of coach there with you in high school. Yeah, and even even you know, like I said, the upperclassmen before I even stepped on the you know the high school campus, like Charlie Sharp, Ryan Gorm, those guys, man. They, I won't say they were bullies, but. <laughs> They were almost like bullies. Like, look, this, you know, you put this jersey on, you're not representing yourself. You're representing the community. You're representing, you know, Oxen Hill High School. So uh, you you, you kind of wanted to make sure you played and rep Oxen Hill to make them proud. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, you know, the, they knew they were passing the torch at some point. So they were they were on us from day one to make sure that we, you know, held up the standard of what Oxen Hill, what it meant to be Oxen Hill Clippers. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it was just the culture of the basketball team. Um, that was there before I even got there. That's tough. So, how would you describe your game in high school? Like, what 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 did you look to do when you got on the court? Um, I used to watch Juan Dixon a lot. Um, that was like one of my favorite players. I tried to model my game after him. Um, Juan Dixon, Jason Williams. Uh, because I didn't have a pass button my senior year. Because <laughs> I had Mike, man. We had Mike for three years. You had to pass yeah. the ball to him. So, my senior year, I didn't have a pass button. I was just trying to get buckets, but um. I try to pattern my game after those two, Jason Williams and Juan Dixon. Okay, okay. What was it in state championship in 2000, right? Oh, uh, we won it. Yeah, we won it in 2000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2000. That year, could y'all, could you feel it? Could you feel it? Or was it something that just kept gaining momentum throughout? It was started in 99. We lost at the buzzer. It was crazy. I remember like it was yesterday. It was like a, it was a mass crime, but we were down one. We were up one. Ball was on the floor uh, pl- playing against Lake Clifton. This is my sophomore year. Mm. Uh like, literally, everybody's on the floor. Big fella doesn't even get on the floor. He picks the ball up. So, because everybody's on the floor with mad scramble, he just lays it up. No resistance at the buzzer. That's sick. So, we return everybody else. So, junior year, it was just like, man, whoever's in our way, we feel bad for him. One, we lost the championship. Two, we returned everybody. And like I said, we had two starting fives. Um, and it was just, I mean, we won the state championship by like 30. It was crazy. So it wasn't something that we feared. It was kind of something like, well, we got to do – we'd have, it'd have been a letdown for us if it didn't happen. Yeah, that, that was basically our only option. Yeah, right, right, right. 
I didn't want to have Blue Monday all all summer because we lost that game. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we made sure we we finished the uh, the job. So on uh, like focusing on you, did your um, what was your recruitment process like? Was it something that came after the state championship, or did it start before that? It was crazy. Like I, I was just talking to somebody about that. Like if you watch me play in high school, because my role always changed. Like with high school, it was if Richard came out, I was a backup point guard. If Oh, Jew, correct me, was a tipping. <laughs> Same thing, Jew, we lost at the buzzer, man. <laughs> um, it, it was like, you watched me at AAU, like, I, my role was so much crazier and bigger than what it was at high school. So, like I said, Rich came out, I was a backup point guard. If Phil came out, like, I didn't even start to my senior year. If Phil came out, it was, you know, get buckets with Mike. So, it, it kind of changed, but my, like I said, my AAU was just do you. Okay. You know what I mean? I ran the one for my dad in the PG Select. Um, so my, I mean, my top, my final was like three or four schools was at that time it was Xavier. Um, they were recruiting me super hard. Like that's where my dad and I thought we were going to go. Okay. Uh, at that time they had David West. Um, coach was, uh, I forget his name, uh, Penders. Went to, um, not Penders, Penders at GW. He went to uh, Wake Forest. Uh, I forget his name. But uh, Coach Battles recruited me heavy. That was probably my top choice. Okay. Then I prayed about it. And then I'm going to George Mason. So it was GW, Xavier, uh, and George Mason. And it just worked out perfectly to go to Mason. Okay. Were they, were they recruiting you just as hard as Xavier? They were, but it's crazy. My first letter from Mason, I threw it away. I was I'm not going to Mason. At that, at that point, I was getting, you know, recruitment from George Mason. I mean, uh, Maryland, Georgetown, uh, Florida State. You know what I mean? So it was just like. Nah, <laughs> but when they told me I had to go to prep school to you know put on some weight, I I couldn't afford prep school back then, so it's like no choice but to go to school. Got you. Go somewhere I can play right away. Got you. Um, so I know everybody like they love the Final Four run, but like leading up to that, what was your experience like at George Mason? <laughs> it was weird. So like my freshman year, is like I never forget, I was sitting at a table and I had my you know my Mason gear, and this girl was like. We have a basketball team. I was like, "What? Like, did you <laughs> not watch us last year? Like, before I got there, they lost to Maryland in the tournament. So, uh, for me, I kind of took it as a challenge. Like, well, if you don't know about this team by the time you know I leave, you gotta know who this team is, this program, what we're all about. So, um, like I said, my freshman year, nobody really knew who we were. By the time we were seeing you, we're a household name. Uh, always had a good team, good location, a great location right outside of DC. Uh -huh. uh, that what was crazy. My senior year probably wasn't my most talented team. It was my sophomore year. Um, we just had a lot of issues <laughs> okay. that I really can't get into. But that was probably the deepest team that we had. We just didn't gel. Um, but yeah, that was the most talented team. My junior year, we sucked and we returned everybody for the run that we had my senior year. And then that's crazy because that year y'all had a lot of talented players, like a lot of right. like local <laughs> players too, like uh Florence from Springbrook, he was up there with you. Yeah. Yeah, like it was a lot of talent. So um that season if you, oh my mm -hmm. bad. You know, so if you ask Tony or Jai, they'll tell you, like our sophomore year, put it this way, myself, just Tony, we didn't start. Uh I I, grabbed, I broke my foot in like the beginning of the season against Carolina. We were up two at the half my sophomore year at Carolina. So, right. You trying to make me take this hat off, but I wore it just for you. <laughs> Let me see the hat. I wore it just for you, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. We got him up out of there. But, yeah. <laughs> so, he, he, you know, Tony and myself didn't start um, really to the end of the season. That's how good we were. We had upperclassmen ahead of us. He sat that upperclassman, and, like, for the end of the season, he was like, you know what? I can't do this anymore. Just rock with the young guys. And that was sort of the beginning of myself, Tony, and Jai as, as underclassmen. That was, like, the beginning of our era. Okay. So, that's how deep that team was. And we ended up losing – we ended up going to the NIT and losing one round before you know, Madison Square Garden in the Elite Eight. So that team was loaded my sophomore year. Like I said, we just didn't, you know, click, you know, at the same time. Everybody wasn't on the same page. But, yeah. So, so going to your senior year, like, was that something for you that clicked? Like you said, the girls, she didn't even know y'all had a basketball team. Right. Was that, like, <laughs> that motivation for, for making that run? Um, no, the, actually, the, most of the motivation came from um, – after my junior year, coach called me, Tony, and Ja, because Tony Skin and Ja Lewis in the office. Mm -hmm. It was like, you know, you'd be your first, you, you'd be the first program, the first team, a class that didn't make it to the NCAA tournament. Yeah. And I mean, we we walked back from his office like, nah, that's not gonna happen. So 
we decided as a unit to make sure everybody stayed on campus that summer and worked out. Uh, pool workouts, boxing workouts, um, weight room, because we didn't really play that many people. When you saw the UConn game, we played six people, seven people max in the NCAA tournament. You know what I mean? That's just yeah. at that time in the, in the season, that's a lot of wear and tear on your body. Yeah. But we knew we had to be in shape that year. So, like I said, my that motivation started that that summer. It was just like we can't go out, you know, not putting NCAA banner up in this in this arena. So, right. the competitiveness amongst my teammates, and not just us, but following Campbell, JV, Will Thomas, those guys were super competitive. Our practices were brutal, man. We literally, I guess I can say this now, we had a fight before we went to Indianapolis in the final four, the final four. Uh, it was, gosh, just wanted to win and wanted to yeah. win at all costs. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we just pushed each other. It was, you know, no animosity between each other. We really were, were a family. We still are, we still talk to this day. We have the group chat. So that's what made that team okay. different compared yeah. to my sophomore year, how close we were. Maybe not as talented as my sophomore year, but if my sophomore year had that, you know, that same cohesiveness, who knows what we could have done because we had the size, we had the skill set, man, but just didn't click. But this team, for some reason, we just clicked. I guess because we were off in the DMV, so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we just, you know, we just, you know, made history. Yeah, for sure. And then, like, like you were saying, like, in the spirit of competition, that's how it gets sometimes, even with your teammates. Like, you really just pushing each other hard as you can. Sometimes yeah. It comes with that. Like, it's, it's nothing wrong with that at the end of the day. Yeah. And I think Coach Mate, he did a good job of, of doing that. Like, we had partners. So, like, Tony was my workout partner. Okay. So, you know, you saw me, you saw Tony. Or you saw Tony, you saw me. Um, we just pushed each other. We really grew a, a bond off the court. So, on the court, it was nothing to say, look, Tony, like, you, you be asking today, oh, Lamar, you like, you can do more than this. You know what yeah. I mean? So, because we had that level of friendship, um, All right. All right. it was just throughout the team. Like I said, that team was just different. It was an anomaly. Yeah. Um, and the, 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 the success just translated onto the court from the relationships that we had. That's how I always – it's crazy you said that. Today I was listening to a podcast with uh, Henry Hall, and he was saying mm -hmm. that's how his teams were so good because they were friends off the court. Like, it was a bond deeper than basketball. Yep. Oh, we go to the clubs together, go to the grocery store. You know, you just hit your teammate, teammate up. Little stuff like that you don't really appreciate until you look back. Like, you know what? My, my other teams didn't do that, but that team did it. Little things like that. Mm -hmm. Um. Again, like we had, <laughs> we just were like a family, man. I, yeah. I, that's the only way I really can describe it. So, making that run, like I remember, what was that, 06? I'm in high school mm -hmm. at that time. And I just. Are you young? Like, yeah, I'm young. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in high school at that time. And I remember how the media was going crazy. And I'm looking from the outside. How was it for y'all as a team, especially at this, like a school, George Mason? Like you said, no one expected that. How was it for um, very mature the t team, so it didn't. It really wasn't a distraction. Um, I remember one vivid moment was I was trying to eat lunch in the Johnson Center before practice, because my coach was crazy. Um, he made his practice all even though we were getting ready to go to the tournament, bodies aching. So I was trying to eat this burger, and I was just doing all these interviews, and I had to stop. Like, look, man, my burger is cold. I got practice in like an hour. My coach not going to hear I didn't eat. So <laughs> it was just like, man, like. You go from, you know, interview here and there, you know, media stopping by after practice to you trying to eat a burger in the Johnson Center before practice and you can't even eat it. It's just like uh, kind of overwhelming. It's like, man, I just want to hoop. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, you enjoy it knowing this won't be, this won't last forever. And this is your last go around as a senior. It's like you just want to stamp your legacy uh, at George Mason. Those games. I mean, y'all knocked mm -hmm. out UNC, mm -hmm. UConn, Michigan State too, right? And Wichita. Wichita, like y'all taking out the big dogs, like, mm -hmm. like I know that energy was crazy, like game after game, it just keeps building, keeps building, like, yeah. did it get to a point, like, where you just, uh, like, like, what was that, just describe that feeling, like, how did it feel doing all that? Well, I can go back to the beginning, uh, Selection Sunday, because uh, it was doubt we would get in, because we had injuries at, at the end of the season, like, Jai and Will were both hurt, but Tony got suspended, um, so that goes into, you know, part of the Selection Sunday, the process. Mm -hmm. So, uh, coaches kept telling us, be confident when you guys will get in. So, you know, our name is called Michigan State is the first matchup. We played Michigan State my junior year. Okay. And like I said, if you watch this our junior year, we sucked because we were all underclassmen. You know, following JV, Will, they go, those guys were freshmen. We lost by six at Horizon Center. Okay. Chris Hill hit two pin down threes really pretty much to seal the game, 66 to 60. So, they lost Kevin Torbert, 
and then somebody else they lost. So we were confident going into that. Oh, Chris Chris Hill. So we were like, we we're confident going into that game. Like, you just gave us a W. Like, if you and if you ever were around that team, very confident. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Father Campbell pointed at the camera during the North Carolina game. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, very confident team. So yeah. we chalked that as a W. Um, Michigan State game. So I mean, to everybody else, it was an upset. To us, it was just like, man, we, we should have beat these. Yeah, we should have beat these dudes last year. Yeah. You know what I mean? When we suck. So we chalked that game up as a W. Then the next game was North Carolina. Again, I, 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 yeah, our sophomore year, we were up two. That team wins the national championship. We we're up two at the half. So we telling these guys, like, dude, that's not even the same team. Like, we can beat these dudes. Mm-hmm. You know, they got off to that, that run and start the game. We were just, you know, cold. It took us a long time to get started. But once we made our run, it was like, look, man, they can't run with us. Yeah. Um, they just didn't have enough experience. And yeah. confidence. You could just see it in their eyes like as a competitor. You can sense it. Yeah. So we made the run, took over in the second half of that game. Uh, and the Wichita State, we weren't playing our best basketball at that point. We went to their place early that year and beat them by three. Tony hit the uh, knockdown three, skip pass to win that game over there. So we saw them. It was crazy. We saw them at the Verizon Center. Like when you have the media day, mm-hmm. you see the teams in passing. So we walked by Wichita. And this Maturgeon was the head coach. He's the head coach in Maryland now. Yeah. So we walked by. And Coach Hill stops to speak to Turgeon, and the team is behind him. And I remember Turgeon was like, you know, hey, how you guys, how you guys doing? Coach like, how you guys doing? And Turgeon was like, we're just happy to be here. And, you know, we from the DMV. We home. You know, we yeah. looking at them. They got their heads down. We're like, are they scared? So, I mean, in the game, we just like, look, man, let's, let's just put them out their misery. So, I think we started the game like 16-2 to 2 against them or something crazy like that. But, yeah, it was just like. We sense the I say the lack of confidence, whereas our team like super confident. Yeah. yeah. Almost borderline arrogant, but not arrogant. Uh same thing with UConn. We were watching them in Iraq. And like again, you see our team, we don't have headphones on. Everybody's joking and laughing. You saw UConn, they weren't a unit. So I remember the night before we played them, we just discussed how they weren't a unit. And then they were disrespectful on TV. You know, at this point, you know, Elite Eight. Chance goes to the final four. You know who your opponents are, mm-hmm. and they were like, "What can you tell us about George Mason?" And they couldn't tell him anything. So it's like, "Okay, you didn't just watch us two days ago." Okay, well, <laughs> or yesterday. I'm sorry. Like you didn't just watch us. You can't name players on the team. Like, okay. All right, so that means you have, yeah, you haven't paid attention to the scouting report. And then we saw Fran on TV. But uh, I forget what news station. I mean, what sports station? He was like, "We have no chance." So I mean, you telling guys from the DMV. Don't have no chance. Well, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. Yeah, yeah. So you just, it's like sharks in bloody water, man. Like guys were just ready, like no yeah. fear whatsoever. Hey, man. Like I just like again, like I was, in high, and I just remember like it was just y'all were everywhere. Like y'all were like yeah. really, like, superstars for that. It was just everywhere, and like, yeah, cool. in fact, everybody was from back home. Like everybody yeah. was back home. So it was just, yeah. it was an exciting time just for basketball. Period. Yeah, scrappy dudes, but definitely was. It was like the Verizon Center game is it's like it's home. <laughs> yeah, so. they don't get no better than that. No, nah, not at all. <laughs> um, all right, so let's go. Like after after you went, did you go to the D League first, or you was overseas at first? Nah, my first year was in Czech Republic in the middle of nowhere. Like I lived the street across the street from a farm, so depending which way the wind blew, it was either a bad day or a good day. Um, and then that was terrible. I never wanted to get back home so quick in my life. My second year, I, would, I did the D League. Oh, I played man. for Colorado. We were stacked. I mean, that we had, long. yeah, we had five dudes that were in the NBA that were sent down. So I left after like sixteen games, eighteen games. Okay. Then like half the season, then I went to Nevada. Okay. Reno. The um. Then after that, I was in Turkey. That experience, um, going overseas, like how was that? Like, the, was it a culture shock over there? Was it something like? Are you glad you yeah. did it or something you regret? Or? No, um, it's a culture shock. It just depends where you are. Like I said, I was in Czech Republic. I was in the middle of nowhere. I was like an hour and a half outside of Prague. Um, so every chance I got, I was like, man, I got to go to the city, see some people that speak English. Yeah. <laughs> so I would go to Prague on the weekends after, you know, we had Sunday off after a game on Saturday, take my shower in, the, in my room. I'm out, get a hotel, come back Monday morning for practice. Um. When I was in Turkey, it was cool because I was in Istanbul. Uh, so, Istanbul is like being in New York. 
people most people speak English. It's right on the water too, so it's beautiful. Like the sea, sea, Seaside Drive. Um, that was much better than for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love Turkey. Like that's one of the places if I had to live overseas, I could live in Turkey. Okay. Um I did two years in Turkey. Uh but most people the only reason I stopped playing was it was crazy. Like my last year, I got my coach wasn't Turkish. So this is how it goes overseas. Like it's I mean, it's, it's, it's <laughs> whatever they want, they really pretty much can do. Okay. So my coach was like, you know, you got to stop shooting the ball. At this point, I'm like top five and scoring in my league, in the league. And he's like, you got to stop shooting the ball because the Turkish players are getting upset. I don't want to lose my job. So I had to stop shooting the ball. So my GM was like, what's going on? Like, well, coach told me to stop shooting the ball. He's like, well, you need to shoot the ball. We're paying you to shoot the ball. I'm like, this is the coach. Y'all ha yeah. hashed that out. So I asked for a release, like, middle of the season, and they wouldn't give it to me. So it just created a, a a firestorm. So after the season, they told teams that I had a marijuana issue. What? Yeah, so all my contracts were getting slashed, slashed. They're like, well, they told us you had a marijuana issue. You failed test. So I'm fighting them. Like, I'm like, man, I'm ready to get on a plane and go find whoever. My GM yeah. that said all this. Yeah. yeah. So it was crazy. So it was like, you know what? Like, I'm not hitting the reset button after seven years, six years of playing. So I had to do something else. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. I saw you hopped in. You were a color analyst for at Mason. Yeah. How was how was that experience? Well, I was trying to see if I wanted to, to be an analyst, uh, just because I know people that were in coaching, mm -hmm. and just being away from home, like I wasn't sure if I wanted to go that route. So I was like, let me just see what it's like to be on the sidelines, but not on the sidelines. Yeah. So yeah. I did that. Yeah, it was cool, and that's when I got the itch to coach. To be honest, um, sure. being around those guys, it was like in the locker room. And it's kind of like you, you know, you're thinking the game as you're you're talking about, it. and it's like, man, if they just did this, so I couldn't, I could never cut that coaching switch off. Gotcha. I mean, even now when I watch games, I'm watching it as a coach, not as a fan. It's something that I hate. So I'm watching the game, watching the game, and I'm like, you know, I, I, I want to coach. Yeah. So it actually gave me the the itch to be a coach, which is why I coach high school, and I coach AAU's now. It's because of that year of being a color analyst for George Mason. You know, just being beside those guys and just scheming my own stuff in my head. Like, and they could do this, they could do X, Y, and Z. So. All right. I mean, that's good. Cause I, I was about to transition into that. So like you went from playing at a high level and you coach at a high level now, like mm -hmm. you're coaching down four to six, you coach with team takeover. So you get to use all that wisdom and knowledge to good use. What is it like? Um, What is it like now you being able to get back some of your knowledge and help, you know, the generation now? It's good. I look at it like, you know, what would I tell myself, you know, 15, 20 years ago? That's how I look at coaching. I look at these guys like it's me, which is why I'm so passionate. Like, and that's how I look at it, honestly. Like, what, what speed bumps did I encounter that I can help these guys not go through in life or on the yeah. court? You know what I mean? That's how yeah. I look at it. Because um, I didn't really have somebody of, you know, I hate to sound, but that's as successful as I was on the court. You know what I mean? So, our generation didn't have, not just me, but our generation didn't have guys that played at those high, high levels and came coming back. back showing, right? You know what I mean? So I took it personal to me. Like, I, I want to make sure I give them everything I have so when they go through their journey of life, somebody else can add on to what they have. So when they look in the mirror, they can say, you know what? I did everything I could do to be successful. Um, and I want to say that I gave everything I had to be. I had two teammates, you know, okay, Tony. Tony Skin, shout out to Tony Skin, Will Thomas. T Skin, my backcourt mate. Uh, yeah. George Mason, my roommate. Yeah. Crazy dude, but hey, some brother right there. Yeah, that's how it's supposed to be, though, for real. Like, they, you gotta have yeah. your brothers on the <laughs> with you. Um, yeah. So, like, like you said, you ain't have people to come back that was on that high level. You gotta, you coach a lot of high level players. I mean, just at Paul, yeah, yeah All American Jeremy Roach. Yes. Trevor, Doug. These are guys, um, I got to see them mm -hmm. a lot in the PYBL. So, it's like, yeah, you know they were headed for that moment, that uh, big. Oh, for sure. Time. Yeah. So what is it like? Uh, <laughs> I need to shape up, man. Everybody need to shape up. Everybody do. Everybody do. No shame. <laughs> no shame. So what is it like uh, being able to give them, you know, that, that advice you were just talking about? You know, they, they big time. They national players already, you know, going yeah. to sophomore, junior years. My biggest thing is just using the experience that I had is, is staying hungry and stay humble. Mm -hmm. Hey, well, don't laugh at him, man. Because he's going to keep going, man. Um, just stay hungry and humble. Uh, like a guy like Will Thomas, he's still playing pro ball in Spain. Like he, he wasn't that highly, super highly recruited guy, but he took somebody's spot and now he's making money overseas in Europe. For how many years, Will? 
We graduated 2008, 2009, so 11 years. You know what I mean? So yeah. and then the goal is to be a pro, whether it's Europe or, or in, in NBA. But, you know, there's only so many slots. So, right. Right. you know what I mean? So you got to stay hungry, keep working, stay down, keep your toes down, keep your head down, you know, stay on it. It will have been in, in, overseas 12 years. So it's, it's, it's guys like that you don't know are coming for you, but you have because you're getting the, the – the, the notoriety now, it's a race. It's a long marathon. It's not a sprint. So, <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, man, I can't. Hey, I told you. Hey, listen, it's, it's every day, though. Hey, I can't, I can't find, and I ain't not letting me live. I can't find my Bluetooth joints. My daughter, like, she she keeps all my headphones. I got, like, four headphones in this house, and I only found one, so. Same here. I don't know. I want to use mine for this one, but my kids got mine somewhere, too, so I got, <laughs> I got you. Yeah, man, she took my headphones. I had to grab the cheap joints that I saw. Probably my wife's. I don't know, but. <laughs> um, so what is it like, like going with Tego, one of the best programs in the country? How right. is like seeing the evolution of AAU now compared to when you were playing it? What is that like, just seeing it? Um, I, I tell people now. So our generation, we get we get hounded for not being that. Excuse me, that um that street street ball playground culture. We didn't really have that. What I credit guys like. Curtis Malone, we had DC Assault, Keith Stevens. What they did is they, you know what I mean, the guys that played street ball in that, that generation before us, they didn't really get the notoriety or exposure because they were outside playing. Yeah. But who's out there, who's at those courts? You know what I mean? That with that what Keith and, and and Curtis did was say, let's take the the intensity by having older guys, pros come back and beat up on our kids. Let's coach the mess out of these kids. Let's still keep that culture, but it's more uh, of a business and it's it's, it's it's a it's a system to it. So we still have that. We have the lead coaching. We have the, the the brutal practices. Like I said, we'll have older vets come back, and then we'll put these guys in front of the coach K's, the coach, the coach, uh, coach K, coach Calipari, coach Dean, I mean, Dean Smith. I'm, I'm tripping. Coach uh, Roy Williams. Yeah, yeah. We'll put the guys in front of them. You know what I mean? So it's it's worked wonders for this generation. Yeah. Like they're getting the exposure that, you know, we wish we had, the coaching that we wish we had. You know what I mean? It, it's just, it's yeah, the opportunity, evolution of it. Yeah. You know, I love to see it, you know what I mean? Because they get, the, like I said, they can, they can have no regrets because they've had plenty of opportunities to showcase their skill sets. And they have the, the information and wisdom from the coaches and even pros that we that come back. Like before yeah. Peach Jam, we had pros come back and scrimmage our guys and help them out. So they have all the tools, all information. What are you going to do with it? And that's what I love about it now is is they they took it and just the model that they have now I just love it. Yeah, yeah, that's something. I, uh, just like talking to like friends, or whatever. I tell them like the kids now they literally have the blueprint to be successful. Yeah. Whatever right it may be like going to play college, uh, professionally, whatever they want to do, the blueprint is there. Everybody yeah. is out for them. And it's, right, it's the blueprint. It's an that's the big thing. thing. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a plan now. We have yeah. a plan, and, and that's all we talk about is the plan the plan do you deviate from it do it our way or do it your way your way is going not going to work you can give you countless stories of kids that tried it that way mm -hmm. or you can do it our way and then let's watch the office fly in and watch the success you have fact. So. that's a fact that's a fact yeah um what is it i know we still talking about like coaching um policies y'all had like a national schedule this year what is it mm -hmm. like being able to like travel the country see all these young great players like again like just when you were playing oxen hill you can only travel so far yeah. to play these games. <laughs> right so right. like that national schedule, this definitely helps the kids, too. They get to get away from home, get away from the area, see mm -hmm. a little bit of the country before they go play college ball. So just speak on, like, right. playing the national schedule at a high school level. Well, for them, it benefits them because when they get to college, it's not the surprise factor or the unknown factor where you're like, I haven't seen this guy play for. Or you're not necessarily nervous, but it's like, oh, man, what's the hype about this guy? Yeah. Um. Whereas when you – when you don't like when you see those guys, like I say, you just familiar. You're familiar. Like oh, I know his game, so you're not. A, it's the, I guess it's the wow factor. Okay. You know what I mean? Because you, they, you know, TV can hype some of these guys up the media. Yeah, yeah. But when you, when you, when you play against them, that, that's what causes the parody in basketball. Because everybody's seen everybody. They played against these guys in AAU. They played against them in summer league, high school. Mm -hmm. So you can't wow them because like I already seen him. Like, yeah. He's not that good. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm from the DMV. So it's very definitely beneficial um, for these guys to have that experience. They're playing college basketball atmosphere games in high school. Right. So what's NCAA is just for a higher state, but they've been in that type of environment. So they're prepared. 
Yeah. He has winning mm-hmm. big games against the school. Yeah. Out Cali, ESPN. Like, that's just, like you said, yeah. prepared you for college already because you did it when you was a junior in high school. Sophomore yeah. High school. Yeah. Yeah, right. So, yeah, they, nah, they're ready, man. Yeah. <laughs> they're ready. Yeah. Ready. So, what has been one thing um, you've been trying to do with, like, the players on, like, whether it's with takeover, part of the season? What are some of the things, like, you're telling the players to keep doing while they're at home right now? Uh, only two, 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 uh, only two things you can work on is ball handling and shooting at this point. Uh, if you have a rim, yeah, uh, which is crazy. The better the ball handler you are, the better shooter you become. Uh, so I saw that's the main the two things that I talked to them about. Um, but that's really it right now. We can okay. do some breakdown stuff as they you know the, towards the end of the summer, but just get better. Yeah, just work on your game. Don't right because when they come back, it's gonna definitely show like who was on that, who was doing. What oh yeah, yeah, was, yeah. And it's, those are the two things I tell my kids all the time. Those are the two easiest things to work on is your ball handling and your shooting. Um, you can't – I can't really, you know, the one summer you can become a better ball handler, better shooter. It takes experience and playing time to get better with your decision-making. I don't care how much time we, yeah. we put in the film. Like, you have to actually go through those those wars and, and making those right reads with, and clutch timing. Like, that stuff is just experience. But ball handling and shooting – and you can put a, a good summer in, and you're good to go. Yeah. And then, right. like, I'm not trying to compare generation. I just love, like, you play at a high level in a different area. Now you're coaching at a high level, different area. A lot of people say, like, you know, kids, they train too much. They don't have, like, a, a they don't have enough mm-hmm. on-court experience like you were just speaking of. Do, right. do you agree with that, or? It's by kid, by kid, kid by kid basis. Um, again, that generation that played a lot, it's like, who are you playing in front of? Where are you playing at? Like, right, right. If there's nobody there, does it matter? It's like, what's that saying? If a tree falls in the woods, and that, does, does it make a sound of nobody there to hear it? You know what I mean? Like, now it's a system to what these kids are doing. They're playing in open gym with the coaches. They're getting skill training. They're going to their training. They have weight training. It's, it's to get ready for that moment when they're in front of high school coaches. I mean, college coaches. Yeah, I got you. Then it's that, you know what I mean? It's that moment they're in front of your Team USA. So they're preparing for something bigger and greater. So you can, you know, the older generation will bash the open gym, I mean, the, the playground culture, and it's like, yeah, but who was there? Like, I just had my, this conversation with my dad this week. Oh, yeah. You, you, could, you could tell me a bunch of guys that didn't play in front of anybody how good they were. That's that's the playground legend. But what does that get you? Like, I, we, I'm trying to get these kids to, kids to college, get them paid. Cause this is what they want to do in life. Okay, this is what it's going to take. We have a blueprint. Right. What does a playground legend give you? A few good stories to tell. Okay. At the barbershop. Yeah. Yeah, we're trying to get these guys paid, man. So yeah, that's this the is goal. their dream. That's that's the end goal. That's what your end goal is. Okay, let's do this. You know what I mean? So and then I hate playing on concrete, man. My it tears your knees up. <laughs> yeah, like that's not that's something a lot of people don't mention. Like come on, yeah. didn't, do, didn't do a lot of people good, so no. I keep pushing it. I'm pretty sure Tony and Will can agree with me on that one. <laughs> that's um, why I stopped playing down the farm. But I couldn't do it no more. Yeah, that's that's yeah. Going, we just had the basketball county documentary planning for right. uh, raising PG County. What did you think of it? I ain't see it yet. Don't tell nobody, man. I got a three year old trying to watch it on TV. Good luck. That's facts. <laughs> that's facts. That's facts. That's facts. I, I stayed. Yeah. Up. I woke up like early that morning. Like I ain't. I couldn't. I ain't wait till nine. I woke up early that morning and watched it. And watched it. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's on the DVR. I just haven't watched it yet. Okay. I said I was gonna watch it tonight, but we'll see. I right, ain't, ain't gonna ruin that. Ain't gonna ruin nothing. But we <laughs> talked about it earlier, playing with George Mason. That pride, like it really is. Like yeah. I feel like a lot of people just probably like, you know, people from different areas. They taking it a certain way, but like you really have to be here to understand yeah. like how competitive and talented it is on any given day of the court. Yeah, we just talked about it. Um, I just talked about it with my dad. Like from the time you're given a basketball. Uh, and I know Tony, because with Tony, if I had this conversation, he used to work out with Jason Muscari, Steve Francis. As you go on in your career, like you work out with those guys, you have that relationship with those guys. You wanna, you wanna make, you wanna make them feel proud. Like that's my little brother. So I'm gonna make them feel proud. So that pushes you. So when you have those type of guys that you can, you know, pause, touch, that pushes you. Like for me, it was like Chris Moreau. Roger Mason, like I would see those guys. Yeah. So yeah. it was like, man, they know me. Oh, I'm gonna make sure that I earn their respect. I mean, like at running shoot when it first opened, I remember I would go Legendary. late at night. Legendary. Yeah, I would go late at night, and they'd be like, "What's good, youngin?" And they're like, "What's going on?" Like, 
like they ask what's going on. Like yeah. I want to make sure I make these guys proud. You yeah. know what I mean? So when you have the like I said, you have those type of guys that just pushes you and drives you. Um, and then when they're your friends or your like your brothers, and they can give you you know pointers. And like, it's just it's just a never in the cycle. Which like I said, just now we have a system to actually get guys better and, and a, a platform but to take over to get them in front of the right coaches mm -hmm. and exposure. So Yeah. And it's good like you were saying, like it wasn't like you just had big names and you heard stories from where right. they walk in the gym and they don't talk to you. Like, nah, these dudes they come in the gym, they showing you love and yeah. they, they want the best for you. So like you said, you don't want to let them down for nothing. Yeah, you don't want to let them down. Yeah. Even at, even at your high school, like personally Oxen Hill, I had seniors that were like, I wanna live up to the standards that they set. I don't wanna let them down. So, you wear that jersey proud every time you work out. Like <laughs> the seniors are pushing you, the upperclassmen are pushing you. So it was yeah. just, it's just a lot. It's big shoes you gotta, you know, try to fill that drives you. This year, did you? Um, I mean, you were coaching everything. You got your own thing on. But did you get to like follow some of Ronald Polite at Oxen? He going to Mason too. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's tough because I'm in the gym every day. Yeah, um, but I check yeah. the Twitter accounts. Uh, yeah, he, he can go. Um, yeah, for sure, he can go. He's gonna do some big things at Mason. See, I, I like me personally. I like guys like that because obviously I came from that. But uh -huh. the, the the biggest difference between guys that go to like public school and private school one is experience, like the level, but the the physicality. So I I tell Coach Simpkins all the time, like man, wait till that dude gets in the weight room, like when a legit strength coach. Like it's, it's no you know, no disrespect, to Oxford, but they don't have a strength coach like we do yeah. or a program. Yeah. Yeah. They just we just don't. But we have a legit program. So wait till he gets that and adds that to the frame he has and to the game he has. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's a different level. Right, 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 right. He hasn't he hasn't peaked like those other guys. You know what I mean? But the skill set is there. It's just the physicality. Yeah. And that's what difference between some guys and guys like him. So no, I I expect big things from him. And then he's confident. Like that's the biggest thing I look for. Confidence. Yeah. Are you a hard worker? And if I can see that in IQ, because if you if you can think the game, I can teach you how to, you know, you know, execution. We can teach all of that, but I, I it's hard to teach this. Yeah, yeah. It's just hard to teach, and he has it, so he, he has he, all those he things. He see so. it while he's out there, and he can react. Yes, he, 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 yes. He's on top of it. He's on top of it. Yes, yes. So, um, yeah. I know, like, not trying to start drama, but can you please, uh, you know, just continue. Well, they had a lot of people saying, you know, if they came to public school, they would dominate. Like, I just, I no. think people forget, like, how tough the county was and yeah. the fact that, like, like you said, you have to have a different type of endurance stamina to do 35, 40 a night. Yeah, <laughs> you do. <laughs> going to you get do. somebody, especially going to get somebody who could give you 30 or 35 themselves, like. You do. Um, just, but they're looking at it from their lens. Mm hmm I mean, I, I, <laughs> is Jew on here? He's still on here? I had this, this, this I said this on Twitter. Uh -huh. I played with Mike Sweeten, and the best game he had was like 35 and 20 something. And it was an incident that happened before the game that made him have that. Okay. So, yeah, nah, you're not yeah. averaging 35. It's tough. It, first of all, it, it was no shot clock when we played. So, you're not going to get 35. Like, a great night was 28. A spectacular yeah. night was in the thirties, so you're you're gonna have an a spectacular night. And then too, back then, uh, you know, county was only difference was the big man. It was yeah, like the guard after my insane. after my sophomore year, we never we never lost to Demath in the scrimmage. We beat Gonzaga, we beat Newport, like all those so called called big private schools. Yeah, it was the the, the difference usually with the big man, the guards. It was even, or if not. You say unless you're Chris McCray, <laughs> yeah, Chris McCray would drop fifty. <laughs> yeah, but uh, that's, that's tough. yeah, we scr and we scrimmaged Chris. He only had like twelve or thirteen. So it's it's tough to it's tough to just come out thinking you're gonna get buckets because guards we're even. Like yeah. I said, the difference usually with the big man mm -hmm. uh, between public and private. The math that will have five or six, and you may have one or one and a half or not even any big man. So yeah, and, uh, and then I think like also I think like they looking at um. You know, like maybe where they're at, you know, now. Yeah, now. Yeah, now. Yeah, with your IQ acting and now, yeah, yeah, of course you average 35. But back then, nah, not even now. No. Nah. Uh, I'm with the friendly, so I'm with the friendly. I'm oh, man. Yeah. They, that, that was our rival. We, uh, yeah. Hey, Jude, that was our sophomore year, right? I think it was a fight. No, it was my freshman year. We fought. It was a fight, and we couldn't play them no more. It, it was my senior year. They, it was a it was a fight too. A few of my friends, they they was there. They'll tell you. Yeah, we couldn't fight them. We couldn't play them. But them and Potomac.
couldn't play no more. We had to stay in the gym like for like an hour and some change while they cleared out outside. And we could never. They said we can never play Potomac or friendly anymore. That's tough. Both teams, we yeah. Then, yeah county then, was wild back then, man. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I just don't see from a competitive standpoint you coming to PG County. And somebody saying, "Oh, you had thirty last night. You're not about to get thirty again tonight." Like, no, about to happen. I never, I never forget my junior year. We playing against Suitland. It was a pass up the right sideline, mm -hmm. and I go to shoot it, like literally mid air. Do play football. I forget his name. Light skin. He used to have a uh, birthmark on his face. Full army, right into my my stomach. I flew into the stands. No, no, no. A flagrant, it was just shoot three free throws. That's insane. Oh, who that Rob? Rob. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Sue and Rob Milner. Hey, we got y'all though. It definitely was. But um, yeah, nah, we we them battles with Sue and I my senior year, we were down twenty at the half. We took them lightly. And I never forget little Mike was standing at the half court line, throwing the middle fingers, and it was like he woke the sleeping bear up and Justin 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 Reeves ended up taking the charge to seal that game late. But yeah. those battles, they were crazy. But us and Roosevelt, like, you didn't get there by halftime, you weren't getting in. The JV game. Yeah, and, like, that's, like, yeah, I'm way younger. But it's, like, following basketball, it was, like, y'all was before when Friendly went on their run. And y'all yeah. was 4A. But, like, 4A with y'all and Roosevelt, it was just, like, that was just tough. Yeah. Man. That's a tough place yeah. to come. And then you're just going to walk in and get easy Ws and stuff. Yeah, Delonte West, Eddie Basden. Uh, who else was on that team? Delonte Holland. Uh, those three pros. Uh -huh. Three NBA players. Um, yeah. Who else? Oh yeah, Sam Young did definitely kill it. That friendly, he had the best pump fake of all time. By the way, all hey, <laughs> me and my boy still talking like how you do that. He get all the way up on the tippy toes. Yeah, best I mean, pump fake. Yeah. I, yes. Uh, trying to think who else on that that Roosevelt team. Mo Carter, he just finished playing a pro ball overseas. So I mean, that team was loaded to matter. Now, Holland should have been in the NBA, though. He would have been in the NBA today. 6'8", smooth score. Yeah, nah. yeah that, the NBA, at one point, if you was a 6'8", score, that, like, the NBA wanted you. That's that yeah, the prototype nah. they wanted. Yeah, he, if he came out too too early. He should have been in the NBA. Uh, um, I mean, that was a great – you got anything you want – oh, what? This is my thing. So, like, you going into, like, you said the, you didn't even want to go to George Mason. No. Nah. Well, what would you tell players, like, about the recruiting process? Like, what's something they overlook or take for granted that they should really pay attention to? Uh, go where you want it. Um, like I said, between my final two was George Mason and Xavier. Um, just go where you want it. What kind of threw me off with Xavier, like, back then you didn't red shirt. Mm. So it was coming in red shirt. So that's what opened the door for Mason. <laughs> okay. Um, and like I said, Mason was at every game I played. Like they made it known they stood under the basket and layup line. Like I saw that Mason logo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it was also hard to say no to Xavier when they you're at camp and David West is your coach at camp. Yeah, so that's a little different. Yeah, but once they started talking to Redshirt, it was like I'm not Redshirt, even though I know I needed to. I weighed 152 as a freaking freshman in college. I put on like 23 pounds before the season. Um, <laughs> I just didn't want to yeah, – we didn't have no serious weight program. Yeah, Austin, yeah. You know, man. County school. That's like you said, that's the difference, though. That's the difference. Yeah, that's the difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we have a legit strength program, whereas county, you just – they don't have the resources to, you know, put in what the, the private schools can. Right. Um. Yeah, nah, I – it was hard to say no to that. I oh, mean, I remember the day I committed my dad and my high school coach was like – my dad was pissed, but my high school coach was like, why? Um. Yeah, he wanted me to wait and – we're from Maryland, but – I wasn't taking that chance. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it worked uh, out though. Like you got the you played yeah. professionally. Everything worked out. One of the greatest final right. finals ever. So, right for a reason. And Maryland was horrible our senior year, so it worked out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they went through some tough times. Yeah. Yeah, Chris McCray and Charles were my guys though, so I can't knock them. But they yeah. just team had issues. Fact. That's a fact. Right. Well. No, nah, I appreciate you for joining us. Um, sharing that no problem. Wisdom. I just feel like, like stories like this about you, like they have to be heard. You know, like people have to know. Yeah. Like PG County is literally loaded from top to bottom, no matter what. Oh yeah, my my generation, we become a dinosaurs, man. It's about these youngies, man. So. Oh yeah, I'm, no. yeah, youngies, yeah. I got them on the energy slot next, but you know, I'm just trying to bridge yeah. that gap a little bit. I'm trying to bridge. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just stay behind the scenes, man. Push these guys in the front, man. We had our time, so. Yeah. Make sure these guys are right. Go take it further and bigger than we 
we've we've done. Let let them let them see the world like we have. It'll just change the way you think, the way you see everything. So I tell them all the time, like you have no idea what's coming. Hey, Daryl, man, you did beat me in a three point contest, man. <laughs> hey, but to that, I needed contacts. I didn't know I couldn't see until I got to college. For real? Oh, I said any. Yeah, I, I needed contacts. Man. Any advice for young coaches? Man, my thing with uh, what level are you trying to coach at? It was that can't stop Murph? He uh he went to Oxen. He a he a wrestling coach up in Ohio now, the D two school. So he just asking okay. for general advice. Like it depends. Like it's so many levels to it. You know, like if you want to coach in college, you want to coach in high school. What's the you know what's your plan? Um, like you know, if you want to coach in college, it's all about relationships, and you got to build relationships with high school coaches, AAU coaches, um, even college coaches. Because what happens is when assistant coach gets a head coaching job, you can help them get players. You can have relationships, and hey, they bring you on. So that's how it just works. But um, as far as the day to day, it's just building relationships with those guys. Like you know, I'm that coach that stays out the practice. Like one of my kids just texted me and called me while I was on here. You know what I mean? Like yeah. helping them. Like how would you treat it? You know, I, I, treat them like it's you. Like how much work would you put in yourself, knowing what you know now? Like just show care for them, man. Like yeah, yeah. Just just care for them. Like show them that you care for them and you love them, genuinely love them, and want the best for them. I mean that's life. Period. Anybody that you come in a relationship with and you have. Um, you know what I mean? Put them before yourself, man. It'll take you, you know, I, I'm a firm believer, the more you give, the more you get. So mm -hmm. that's my philosophy. So I give these kids a lot um, that, I, that I've learned. Um, I'll be I'll be the first to, you know, tweet about them. I'll be the first to you know, let them know they're messing up. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, was, that was my philosophy. You know, when I played Tony, like, we held each other accountable, but that's just how it is. Accountability and just, you know, just push them and stretch them as far as they can go. Right. And show them that it's, it, it show them that they can be stretched further than what they're comfortable, you know, currently at right now. So, and hold them like I like what you said about um, holding them accountable because it's, it's always gonna be people in their ear that just tell them everything they want to hear. Yeah. So it, you got the coaches have to be the person, you know, let them really know what's going on. Can't just yeah. Until there you go. Yeah, because you have the truth be told, they haven't done anything. <laughs> That's what I tell them. Like, yeah. at the end of the day, if your career ended right now, what would you say you've done? Nothing, and you're just a high school. It's, it's going to be another, you know, kids like Coach Trevor Kills, another Jeremy Roach, another Doug McDaniel, another Christian May. You know what I mean? Those type of kids that we coach. It's going to be another one that they'll write about. Right. That's true. So what have you done in your career? Get articles and retweets? No, that's not what we plan for. That angle you know I mean? we talked about earlier. Yeah. If we plan to get paid, you haven't gotten paid yet. So let's, let's celebrate when you get that first check. Right. And until then, keep working. You know what I mean? Getting the offer is just the – they offer six dudes at your position. Yeah. You know what I mean? Scholarship is nothing. Yeah. That's your end goal to get a scholarship. Okay, let's celebrate. But if it's to play college basketball, everybody got recruited just like you. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Uh, I tell yeah. the kids, no shame. I took the upperclassman spot when I got to Mason. That was my goal. When I got to Oxen Hill, Coach Bear, is, I, <laughs> after my freshman year, was like, I'm taking his spot. Like, he's not – and I told Coach Bear that. Like, I, he's not better than me. Like, that's, 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 that's how your mindset should be. Yeah. Until you get to where you're – you say, you know what, I'm I'm happy. This is what my goal was. I keep working. You know, stay confident, stay humble, but just keep working. That's real. That's real. Yeah. All right, Lamar, I definitely appreciate you hopping on with us. And uh, we're gonna be keep as soon as we get back out there, we're gonna keep I'm gonna be keeping up with TTO for the six. Oh yeah, TTO for sure. PBI, yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. be seeing us. We, got, we get we loaded this year, so hopefully we have a season, have a yeah. chance to. Yeah, we were seventy one and seventy in my high school career, coach. That's crazy. Uh, that's tough. See, yeah, that's tough. That's tough. That's yeah. what I'm saying. That's why I love these interviews. Like, people have to know. Like, it's a lot, it's a lot of stories, a lot of stuff you don't know. You know? Oh yeah, like I said, we old. <laughs> we didn't have Twitter and Facebook, so <laughs> we just got barbershop talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what like I said. We try and bridge that gap so it'll be still told out here. Right. Now nah, we close, Coach. We well, I'm all online, man. If you need some information, call me. My website is getting redone at sportsheaven.club. So. Just send me a DM and I can uh, get you the website information. Clippers Athletics. Okay, we're gonna be here all day, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, man. You all right? Watch the documentary though. It's good though. It's great. Yeah, I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna try to watch it tonight. Uh, My daughter sleep. All right. All right, easy. Thank you again. Yep.